Okay, so along homework 9a goes with 9a's lecture, which is about how to clear fractions and decimals before you start working to solve an equation. And when you do that solving, you'll be working with integers for all of your coefficients and constants. So here's the first one. What would you use as an LCD to cancel these? To cancel a 2 and a 4, I would go with 4 is the biggest. And does 4 divide by 2? Yes. So far, I'm thinking LCD is 4. So now I take the 4 that I'm working with, and I work it with the 9. 9 is the biggest. 9 divided by 4 doesn't work. 18 divided by 4 doesn't work. Then I get 18 plus 9 is 27 divided by 4, which doesn't work. But then I add, eight, add 9 more, and I get 36 divided by 4, which gets me 9. Knowing the 4 will cancel, would cancel the 2 and the 4, I start looking for things that will work, and I wind up using 36 over 1. So what I would use here is 36 over 1 to cancel. And you'll see how those come into play as we go to something else like this, problem 2. We're looking at 3 and 6. So LCD for 3 and 6. So 6 is larger. Does 6 divide by 3? Yes, it gets me 2. This is over 1, so I'm going to proceed to do this problem, leaving space in front of each coefficient or constant. So we have... 1 over 3 times b plus 2, which goes over 1, and then equals with space in front of 5 over 6. And in each space, I'm going to put my LCD of 6 over 1. So 6 over 1 times the 1 3rd, 6 over 1 times the 2, 6 over 1 times the 5 over 6. And you have to do that when you have an equation and you want to clear the fractions. You have to hit every term that you have. If you have parentheses in there, you should get rid of the parentheses first. That's still then our, our deal that we've been working on. Okay, 3 divided by 3 is 1, but 6 divided by 3 is 2. Don't need to cancel with the 1. 6 divided by 6 is 1. Blue 6 divided by 6 is 1. Always start your canceling at the bottom. You must get that down to 1, so that tells you what to divide by. What does that create for us here? It's got me 2 times 1. It's going to get me 2 times b plus 6 times 2. It's going to get me 12, and then that equals 1 times 5 which is 5. And because all the denominators are now 1 times 1, I will have 1 for my denominators, and I don't even have to treat them as fractions anymore. The only b I have here, and it's positive, so that's good. I'm going to get rid of this plus 12 and see what happens when I subtract 12 or add negative 12 to both sides. And what that gets for me here is 2b alone is equal to 5 minus 12. You do your subtraction, because they work against each other, but you get 7, right? If you add 5 more to each, you have 17 minus 10. That will also tell you why you get 7. Divide by 2. Looks like b equals 7 over 2. I think that's it. Let's go to blue and see if that works. I had the old 1 over 3 times my number plus 2, which is 2 over 1. And I'm wondering if that makes 5 over 6. If it does, we have the perfect solution. If not, it's wrong. So here we have 7 over 2 going in my value for b. No canceling, so we get 7 times 1 for 7 over 3 times 2 for 6. If I want this over 6, I'll multiply my 2 and my 1 each by 6, top and bottom. So, let's see, what did I have? Yeah, I've got 7 over, oh, negative 7 here. Get my perfect wrong. I don't like to do it, so watch it, but need to do it. 7 here was negative, my 7 here is negative, and therefore my 7 over 2 that I'm putting in is negative. Negative 7 over 6, 2 times 6 is 12 on top, and 1 times 6 is 6 on the bottom. So we have over 6, negative 7 plus 12, subtract for 5, draw down the positive, and they do equal. So that makes it perfect. Next one. Look at my LCDs. All I have for denominators that I see are 5, so my LCD is going to be 5 over 1. And so now when I rewrite this, I will also insert my plus signs. But I have 9 over 5 with an x. I will insert my plus sign and follow it up with my negative before I put my 8, which is over 1, equals space in front of my 3 over 5 with the x plus space in front of my 28, which goes over 1. Now, we've decided to use an LCD of 5 over 1, so 5 over 1 in four places. There are four terms involved in this entire equation, so I'll have 5 over 1 go into all four places. We 
and come back and do our canceling. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 5 also 1. 1s don't need to cancel. One, uh, here we have 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 1s don't need to cancel. We have 1 times 9 with an x. 9x plus negative 5 times 8. Plus negative 5 times 8 is 40. Remember, we don't have fractions anymore because of the 1 for every created denominator. Equals 1 times 3 with an x equals 3x plus 5 times 28, which is 140. Now I must get rid of the worst bank balance for x. 3 is worse than 9. So I'll get rid of 3x. Gone. This makes 6x. This has to go, so plus 40. Plus 40. So that's gone. Equals 180. Divide by 6, and you'll see 30 for my answer. My solution here is 30. So 30 should work in the original. On one side, I have 9 over 5 times my number, minus 8. My number is 30, also known as 30 over 1. The other side, I have 3 fifths x plus 28. So 3 fifths times my number plus 28. And again, 30 will go in as 30 over 1. So we'll come over with the fractions. Okay. So 9 doesn't reduce with 5, but 30 and 5. Divide by 5 for 1, divide by 5 for 6. 54 minus 8. So you set that up for 54 minus 8. That's going to get you 40 and 14. 14 minus 8 is 6, or 2 more each will get you 6. And 46. On this one, we have 5 divided by 5 is 1. 30 divided by 5 is 6. 3 times 6 is 18 plus... 28. And therefore, when you add 28 and 18, both working as positive numbers together, 46. And they work. So both sides hit the target of 46, as long as we use our solution that we found to be x equals 30. And now I'll be erasing and setting us up for number We'll solve this one. It has fractions and it has parentheses. I would get rid of the parentheses first. That'll set me up to see what I have in terms of fractions for clearing. You don't have to worry about reducing the fractions every step of the way. As long as you clear the fractions out, you'll be set. Uh, so we're going to go 1 8th times 3. Each of these numbers is over 1. So we're going to get 1 times 3 with an M, but that's over 8. 1 over 8 is 1 times 3 on top, 8 times 1 on the bottom, plus 1 times 10 on the top for 10, the bottom will be 8 times 1. You can make it 5 fourths, but that's not necessary. Equals. Now we're coming over here, and we're going to get 1 fourth times 3m plus 2. That quantity so will go 1 times 3 on top with a 4 on the bottom, including an m, plus 1 times 2 on top with a 4 on the bottom. And you can make that one half, but you don't have to do that. We'll come back now looking at 8s and 4s for my denominators. So for my LCM, I'm thinking about trying an 8. Divide that by 4, yeah, that equals 2. 8 over 1, that's going to be my LCM. So that means I'm going to squeeze an 8 over 1 in front of each one of my coefficients or constants, and I had less space when I created it. That will cancel every denominator. And since we're looking to cancel the denominator, I recommend that you start by getting the denominator divided out. 8 divided by 8 is 1, this blue 8 divided by 8 also 1. 8 divided by 8 is 1, this 8 divided by 8 is also 1. Now we're dividing by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, but 8 divided by 4 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And we'll go back and see. 1 times 3 is 3 with an m, plus 1 times 10 is 10, equals 2 times 3 is 6 with an m, plus 2 times 2, which is 4. I'm going to get rid of the worst bank balance. 3 is worse than 6 when both are positive, so I'm going to get rid of it with minus 3m on each side. Get one side that scratches out, the other side, which becomes, in this case, 3m. Now that has to go. This is my m side on the right, so that means I can't keep my plus 4, so I'm going to go with subtracting or adding of negative 4. That'll be gone, and I will get this. 10 minus 6, and let's see. Yep, 10 minus 6 will get me 4. Right 
something seems wrong, make sure I copied it right. Three eighths minus two, we go to three and plus ten, six and plus four. Oh, plus ten, right? All right, three and, and oh, doy, I caught myself. I was thinking ahead of my answer rather than what I should be writing. So you may have saw when I did the subtraction, it should be subtracting four right here, just as I had subtracted four over there. Therefore, it'll get me six. All right. Now we can proceed to divide both sides by three. M equals two. Had I proceeded with the other fraction answer, it would not have hit the same target on both sides. I could have gone ahead with it, but I caught it a little bit earlier, knowing my answer from having done the problem previously. Let's see what happens when we try out these one over eight times three times my number plus 10. And that's supposed to get the same target as one over four times parentheses with three times my number plus two. My number is going in as a two in each case. So two there, two there. Three times two plus 10 is six plus 10. One eighth of that. So we're gonna go with one eighth of 16, which is over one. And that gets me 16 over eight or would get me two. So that's what this target is gonna form. Now this one I have one fourth times six plus two, which is one fourth times eight, which is one fourth times eight over one. And you can see that also develops into two. I could have done this back here with the division. No, canceling two over one equals two. The two targets are the same. Rarely does it happen, but I guess it now can. Uh, M is our solution, value M equals two, and it does happen at the same target on both sides. It worked out in this weird instance that the target was also two, but it doesn't have to be, and usually it's not. Okay, here we're gonna get rid of the parentheses. One times nine is nine over six with an X, plus negative one times four is four over six, no X. And then we have three over two with an X plus negative two over three. LCD, <clears throat> if you know it's six, that's great. Here's why it works. Uh, LCD is gonna try to work for six and three. Six divides by three and gets me two. And therefore, six will divide by, oh, six divided by two and six divides by two and three. So six will cancel every denominator if I should have that to work as my LCD. So I will. I will go through here and set up my LCD. I'll write my equation again, no parentheses already, but space in front of every x. Nine over six with an x plus negative space in front of four over six equals space in front of three over two x plus uh, negative with space between the negative and the two-thirds. In goes six over one. I'll remind you that we're looking here to find out what is it that has to happen so that the two sides hit the same target. When we divide six by six for one, 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 divide two by two for one, six by two for three, divide three by three for one, six by three for two. One times nine is nine X plus negative four equals three times three is nine X plus negative two times two, negative four. For those, uh, let's see, I said negative, yeah. So when we go through here, we're looking to get rid of the worst bank balance. It looks like a tie, so let me just take nine X off here as well as nine X off over here. That gets me negative four equals negative four. And so what happens whenever we find a value for m, a single value as the solution, that's the only number that works because the only situation that's gonna correspond to hitting the same target on both sides is when you have the m equals to two in that case. But here, this says that any time negative four equals negative four, you're going to have a solution. And that happens all the time because the opportunities are to say, sometimes, always, or never. If it's sometimes, you'll find that time with the solution as a number. If it's always, you get something that's always true. Negative four always equals negative four. If it were to say something like negative four equals seven, that's never true and you'd have no solutions. But this one falls under the category of all real numbers, meaning no matter what number you put in, you're gonna get the two sides to hit the same target. I can't tell you what the target would be because it'll change every time what the target is based on what number you put in, but it will be the same number on both sides. You'll see that often throughout this homework. Um, it'll show up possibly even more than it should 
Um, but it's worth noting that that does happen. So when you come up with that, the answer will be all real numbers. And that will be offered to you in a lot of the examples. All real numbers or tell me what X is or no solutions. And you click the button for no solutions or all real numbers when those pop up. So I'll race and we'll get ourselves over here onto problem six. I'm going to go after this one. Uh, if you have a whole number, it will be over one. And if you have more than one term in the numerator, you'll put it in parentheses. That'll make sure that they all get the effect of what happens with our multiplying. So when we go here for our LCD, I see all that's here is five. So that's going to be my LCD equals five over one. Remembering that one goes under any integer as its denominator. So what we have here is b plus four over five plus space in front of eight plus two, eight b plus two, it never works as well as tool, eight b plus two in parentheses, and that goes over five, and this is equal to the negative six, which is over one. I'm gonna put, there's space in front of each one of the newly developed terms, or, you know, so in front of this parentheses, in front of this parentheses, and in front of the six over one, but I do have my dash because that six is negative. I'm going to drop my LCD right in that gap. LCD of five over one times each of the terms. So what happens when you do that, reminder, is it makes the target five times as big and it makes the other side five times as big, but it's still gonna need the same number to create the balance that comes from finding the solution. So we'll divide five by five for one, divide five by five for one. Five divided by five is one, five divided by five is one, and we don't cancel over there where we already have ones. So now I have one times b with a four. One times b plus four becomes one, b plus four, plus one times eight with a b is eight b, plus one times two is two, equals negative five times six, 30. I'm gonna combine like terms. This would go back to the technique of not looking over there, but saying one B plus four plus eight B plus two, the eight B joins the one B as itself and the two joins the four as itself. Can we come out of here with nine B plus six equals negative 30? Nine B plus six. So now, I want to get the 9b alone, and it's positive 9b, so that's good. I'm going to subtract 6 off both sides. So that 9b equals, when I add negative 6 to both sides, negative 36. Divide both sides by 9 to find that my b equals negative 4. Big b is negative 4, and we're going to go find out if negative 4 makes this happen to hit the target on both sides. The target seems to be focused in on negative six. So does putting in negative four create a value of negative six? We'll, we'll use negative four for the b's on the left side. So we have our number plus four over five, plus we have eight times our number plus two over five. Does that turn out to equal negative six? All right, number going in, negative four, B plus negative four, okay. Oh, uh, let's see. Ah, I didn't put my parentheses like that. Here we go. B's going in as negative four, negative four. Top one is zero. Negative four plus four is zero over five. Plus, we have negative 32 plus two over five. That's gonna get me zero plus 30. It's all over five, so I can put over five singly. I'm gonna get negative 30, right? Negative 32 plus two is a 30. It's drawn in the negative, so I have negative 30 over five. That is negative six over one for negative six, and it does. Let's hit the target, making the B equals negative four perfect. Now we come to this one. We have four and two as our LCD options, so we're gonna start with the large one of four. Does four divide by two? It does, it gets me two. So my LCD is gonna be using four over one. I will write each part of the equation with the space in front of it. So I will have my Q minus 12 is in parentheses and over four space in front of it for the LCD. 
equals my one is one over one with space in front of it for the LCD. Plus I have negative, and back here I have my parentheses for Q plus negative one, and that's over two using my LCD of four in each place. So for each of the four locations, I'm gonna put multiplication by four. And now when I come through, I'll see that I have four divided by four is one, four divided by four is one. One, I don't need to cancel, and two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. And so now I'm ready to look at what happens when I have one times Q plus negative 12 equals four times one plus negative two times four Q plus negative one. One Q plus negative 12 equals four plus negative eight Q. And here, here's a negative two in black times a negative one back there. So that's gonna be the opposite of negative and get me positive two. There are no like terms on the left side with q and negative 12, but over here we have 4 plus negative 8q plus 2, the plus 2 will join the 4. 6, the rest will stay the same. So it'll be q plus negative 12 equals 6 plus negative 8q. We'll bring that up here for space. We'll have 1q plus negative 12 equals 6 plus negative 8q. Negative 8q is worse, so I'm going to add to both sides 8q. It's better to have 1q than to owe 8qs, so this will cancel. That means that this can't stay when I create my 9q over here. This can't stay, so plus 12 plus 12 equals 18. Divide by 9. Divide by 9. Q equals positive 2. Let's see what happens when we go over here. We have our number minus 12 over four. And we see what that's gonna work out to. And over here we have one over one minus four times our number, all minus one, and that's all over two. In for the numbers. We've decided that we found the cube to be equal to two. So if we put the two in here and the two in here. That having nothing in front of its parentheses, it's one times two, and that's why those parentheses will not be here when I get back to two plus negative 12 all over four, negative 10 over four, negative five over two, fully reduced. Now on this side, I have <clears throat> one over one plus negative eight minus, <clears throat> eight minus one, over two. And therefore that's negative negatives don't just float around negative one. This is one over one plus negative one times seven over two. Multiplying top and bottom of this one over one by two will get two over two plus negative seven over two, two plus negative seven all over two, yeah, negative five over two. And those two hit each other as the target that we're going for. We get there with Q equals two. And so now I'll erase and get us set up here with number eight. I'd like to have all these having the same, I think I left out a letter, there's no variable in number eight the way I've written it, ah, because it's got a B right there, okay. I'd like to have each of these having the same number of decimals, so what I turn this into is negative 8.0B plus 2.5 equals negative 5.5, each with a single decimal place. Therefore, I need to move the decimal once, that's going to require me to multiply each one by 10. So I multiply each one of them by 10. 10 times 8.0, it's negative, but I'm going to get 80B plus. 10 times 2.5 becomes 25 equals, and 10 times negative 5.5 will get me negative 55. That's what I need to work with now. I have my worst bank balance over here, so I'm going to go ahead and create for myself a 
will plus zero be? You can work with a negative coefficient if you like. But I'm going to add 80 b to both sides, 8, 0, b. That's gone, that can't stay, so plus 55. And then I add this together and I get 80 to go along with 0 plus 8 is 80 b. Looks like I'm getting, when I divide by 8, b equals 1. I think b is 1. If I put in negative 8 times my number, plus 2.5, that's supposed to equal negative 5.5. My number goes in as 1. 8 times 1 is going to get me 8 with a negative, so I get negative 8 plus 2.5. So there we have 8 minus 2.5. That becomes 70, and this is 10 minus 5, 5. 7 minus 2 is 5.5. Yes, we do have that thing equaling 5.5 strong on the negative, and therefore, a perfect hit. Let's see what the other ones were. Okay. On this one, we're going to try that same thing. One decimal place, one decimal place. Hmm, they can't all have Bs. I don't know what was going on here. The 8 got a little crazy. I guess that's where the B from over there landed. Let's see what we got here. Single decimal, single decimal, nothing going on yet. So really that's 1b, and therefore we'll write it as 0.3b plus 58.8, which is unchanged, and that equals 1.0b. And now I can multiply each one in order to move the decimal once by 10. So 10 times each one of those values will get me through this 10, times 0.3 will get me the full 3b, 58.8 times 10 will get me 588. The digits don't change, but the location of the decimal does when you multiply by powers of 10. And then 10 times 1 is going to get me 10b. I want to keep my 10b where it is, so I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to subtract 3b on each side so that I get rid of the worst and keep my positive 7b equals 588. Divide by 7. So 588 divided by 7. If you have your calculator, that's awesome. Go set, uh, let's say 8 will get me 56, bring me 28 for 4. So it appears here that B equals 84. And let's find out. 0.3 times my number plus 58.8 is supposed to equal my number, which is 84. My number's here as well. The reason the 84 comes free in the next step is because there's one out in front of the parentheses if there's nothing already there as a coefficient. So this is going to be 84 that I'm trying to hit. And over here I've got to do 3 times 84. Okay, 12. Get rid of 1. 3 times 8 is 24. 252 for digits. I need one decimal digit, so I get 25.2 plus 58.8. So since I'm getting added together, we can go like this. Zero and one there. 13, let's see. Six and four, 14. And carrying one over here, we got 84. So that number is 84 and hits the target. And we're like an arc. Finally, this one, we have 0.17p plus 2.00, everyone's getting two decimal digits, plus negative 0.40p equals, two decimal digits will be fine, 0.21p plus negative 0.20. That's going to get multiplied by 100. 100 will move the decimal twice, so we won't have decimals in any of our terms. The digits stay the same, but the decimal moves to make it bigger, twice. We now have 17p plus 200 plus negative 40p equals 21p plus negative 20. There are like terms around in this one. Over here, we have a, a p 
term, a number, and then another p term. So I will subtract 40p or use negative 40p over here. That doesn't have like terms, so we do 40 minus 17 to find out what we get because they work against each other, what we're going to have here. So 40 becomes 30 and 10 minus 7 for 3, 3 minus 1 for 2, 23, strong on the negative, p plus 200 equals 21p plus negative 20. 23 negative or 21 positive, that's worse. I'm going to add 23p to both sides. Gone here, but 44p on the right. Can't keep the 20 there. The negative 20 has to get rid of with positive 20. So we'll get 220 when we add these. Equal to 44p. We'll divide by 44. We'll be looking at 220 divided by 44. Uh, I can't divide 2 by 44, nor 22 by 44, but maybe two, then 220 by it, that works. So I'm looking at maybe 20 divided by 4, I'll try a 5. 5 times 4 is 20, gives me 2. 5 times 4 is 20 again, 22. Perfect. 5. I think 5 is right. Let's see. 0 0.17 times my number, plus 2 plus negative 0 0.4 times my number is supposed to equal the same thing as 0 0.21 times my number plus negative 0 0.2. Okay, I'm going to close it as 5. Yeah, I can calculate it now, so I'll go through the process of what this makes without all the multiplying out. 5 times 17 will get me 85 with two decimal places, so 0.85 plus 2 plus 5 times 0.4 will get me negative 2. And so these two make 2.85 minus 2, and I get 0.85 over here. On this one, I put in my 5. Then I get 1.05 plus negative 0.2. And subtracting that off like this, get me 0.85. The targets hit the same thing. That makes it correct to have 5 as our solution. And that's the end of my representation for homework 9A.